Hello, all you crypto aficionados, and we are here with your weekend crypto update. First thing on the list, Hong Kong is updating its crypto policy, but this is not good news because they are making it tighter after reviewing after the JPEX scam. JPEX was an unregistered exchange that scammed people out of millions of dollars in Hong Kong. They received over a thousand complaints about JPEX. And because of that, they're looking to tighten the reins, making some products only available to fat cats and accredited investors, and um, basically tightening the bolts on middlemen so like middlemen have to make sure that their clients know the ins and outs of crypto before they do any transactions. This is going to make crypto less accessible to some people in Hong Kong. This is just another fine example of how a couple of bad actors can screw it up for everyone. And trust me, crypto does have a lot of bad actors. If you don't know that by now, you're living in a cave because there's a ton of bad actors in crypto and it looks makes the rest of us look bad and it makes the feds want to come down on us hard. So what can you do? If you see a crypto scam, you should report it to the authorities. I don't really care if it's by a guy you really like. If you see like a crypto scam, that's obviously like a Ponzi scam or a pyramid scheme or is an exchange that's just wanting to, you know, take people's money, you need to report it to the authorities because, you know, I know a lot of us are like, oh, crypto can take care of itself. We don't need the feds to interfere. No, that's a bunch of BS because um, obviously it doesn't work. Self-regulation has pretty much never worked for an industry because when they try to do that, the scammers always come out on top. And if they keep coming out on top, the feds are going to reduce our freedoms in crypto. If you tell the feds, you're not like a hero or anything, and the people that you tell on might hate you, but that's better than having the entire crypto industry shut down. And remember, the scammers, even though they pretend to be your friend, they don't care about you, so you should not care about them. They need to be eliminated from the crypto space with extreme uh, prejudice, and that they need to do by, by uh, having the feds sick their ninjas on them. Because, you know, the federal authorities do actually have a lot of power if they know which cryptos are actually scams. I mean, I mean, I think Gary Ginzer kind of ignored it, but a lot the DOJ and a lot of the other stuff, if they actually get an alert, they will go after these schemes. Don't be afraid to tattle on crypto projects if you think they are actually scams. Now, you have to have decent proof that they are scams. You can't just be like, I don't like this crypto project, I don't like this founder, therefore I think it's a scam. That That's not going to work because people are just going to stop listening to you. But the thing is, like, if you have adequate... Uh, if you have adequate uh, proof or adequate evidence, you can actually tell the authorities you think X crypto project is a scam. You know, it's better that it gets terminated while it's in its infant phase before it screws a lot of investors, then allow it to get big like FTX and then have them screw a lot of investors in because that brings scrutiny on our industry and that's bad for all of us. So remember, don't think those crypto scam artists are your friends just because they're nice to you. If you think it's shady, if you think it's shady, get some evidence and then tell the authorities. Don't be afraid to tell the authorities because you're like anti-government or whatever. That's nonsense. If you want our industry to survive and thrive, you actually need to get rid of these bad actors. And you can't do it by yourself because you can't just like go over there and beat them up. That's like illegal. But you can tell the federal authorities and have the federal authorities sick the ninjas on them. So that's the thing about Hong Kong's uh, change in policy. Um, like I said, it's mainly like they're going to make a lot of services only available to accredited customers and then they are, they're going to like clamp down on the middlemen. So it can actually make some services of crypto, um, not viable or not available to the regular J, uh, John Doe's of the world like us. So that's the, um, news about Hong Kong. The Reddit mods totally scam their crypto users. Yes. It wasn't that they just like, you know, said they were going to discontinue that crypto program. Now it shows that Reddit mods dumped tokens just hours before blockchain program termination. So the mods obviously knew this was coming. And of course, they took advantage of insider information. Now, because there are Reddit coins, I'm not really sure like how much prison this actually warrants. I do think it warrants a couple of smacks across the face, though, because, like, you know, a couple of slaps across the face because they are actually, you know, scamming people. Now, I'm just kidding about the sl uh, slaps across the face. I think uh, it does warrant some fines and maybe some prison time because they were in a position of power and they abused that position of power to scam over many, many people. So a popular social network platform Reddit announced the wind down of its blockchain-based community points program on October 17th, but just a few hours
hours before, these mods who knew exactly what was coming dumped all their tokens um, and used this insider information to be enrich themselves and screw the rest of the community. And there needs to be a comeuppance for that in a legal sense. Each subreddit had its own native token. Obviously, like Moons and Bricks were the, um, the two examples. And they both went down like 90%. There definitely needs to be some legal remedy for this. They can't be allowed to get away with this with no penalty. Although if these mods aren't really working with each other, I'm not really sure what you can actually do. But they definitely had access to more of this information uh, than the regular users. Because obviously Reddit told the mods way before the users actually got the notice of the information. So they were able to dump all those tokens. The coins probably like tanked because of that. And then everyone else was basically looking to fight for scraps at that point. So obviously they dumped the tokens at the expense of everyone else. So like Reddit amends told our cryptocurrency moderators beforehand and three moderators sold moon tokens on insider information. Moon price dropped 22% minutes before the announcement was posted. So the thing is like, here's a list of Reddit moderators acting on inside information before the announcement. If they actually did, or if anyone took shorts on this information, they definitely need to be held accountable because this is egregious. Even though it's just a bunch of Reddit moon tokens, it's still part of the crypto industry and it still makes us look bad because it shows us that there's like so much insider trading at every single opportunity in crypto. Why Bitcoin SV pumped the, uh, this weekend? It's because they got perpetual futures on Binance. You know what that means? That pump is going to be accompanied by a giant dump soon. So obviously it ripped nearly 60% this weekend amid a new futures listing on top global crypto exchange Binance. Um, basically, like it, I think it went to $54 from $34. But if it is because of the perpetual futures, you know they are going to be sold down in the same way. So like right now, I don't really know if it's actually reached the top or when it's actually going to reach its top, but it's probably fairly close. It, I mean, like we've seen BSV like pump, you know, to egregious heights before. Like it basically like tripled almost like over two weeks once and then it just dumped down harder than ever. I fully expect this to dump down by sometime next month. I don't know when it's going to dump down. I wouldn't take a short on it with leverage right now, obviously, because you don't know if it's not going to pump up again. Um, you know, perpetual futures can do a lot to the price of a coin. They're very, very dangerous to play with either way. So definitely don't take a short on them, but I would not buy BSV right now either because you're essentially just playing hot potato and someone is going to get burned and that someone is very likely you if you buy it or take a short on it right now. Um, because obviously you can get liquidated if it pumps. And if you buy it right now, you're stuck with a coin for the next two or three years that won't really do anything because realistically, BSV does not have a future. No one actually cares about BSV. They have a lot of architectural problems, but outside of that, no one actually uses BSV. And uh, just like all the other Bitcoin forks, it's pretty much worthless at this point. I know Craig Wright won't like me saying that. He still thinks he's Satoshi Nakamoto, which he isn't, by the way. I know he bought that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto Twitter account, but that Twitter account was created 10 years after Bitcoin was created, so it's not the official Satoshi Nakamoto account. Not by Satoshi Nakamoto, anyways. So yes, BSV is pumping, but it will be accompanied by a massive dump very, very soon. So watch out for that, and don't buy any BSV right now, because it is a perpetual futures pump. Binance is going to restore European services. That's right. Uh, basically, like they found a new banking partner and um, now they're going to restore the euro. So euro payments, deposits and withdrawals are back on for European Binance users uh, one month after termination of uh, services by PaySafe. Obviously, Binance is having a lot of trouble with this. I think it's pressure from governments to try to kill Binance, but there are companies that are actually working with Binance right now. And like I said, I think Binance, now that they've basically pushed Russia to the side, I think they're gonna find regulations a little easier to actually abide by. Hopefully that's the case anyways. I wouldn't really want Binance to really have any trouble. But you know, their recent uh, re-emergence in the UK, uh, their, re their recent addition back into Belgium, and now this does signal to me that they're going in the right direction. So maybe, um, I think they will actually get still uh, remain the biggest crypto exchange in the world. And like these new fiat agreements, 
is definitely good. More Euro fiat channels have arrived on Binance. We're proud to, uh, proud to announce that we've entered into agreements with multiple new EUR partners to provide deposit, withdrawal, and payment services, making your experience even more seamless. So that's good because they're not completely dependent on one, and hopefully something like this will not happen in the future. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.